Well, folks, in this video series, you're gonna see us doing all kinds of the processes necessary to get an elk from laying on the ground out in the field, probably in the back country, to getting it into manageable pieces, to getting it in your pack, to taking care of boning and all the meat cooling, to getting it home. But there's a couple basics that no matter what we're doing here, I want to talk about because they're pretty important in the bigger picture of how you do things. For me, I want to protect my main cutting edge. And you'll see that the product that we've been working on here with Gerber for the last two years has two options. One is called an exchangeable blade system, EBS. And then one is called a dual tool system because it's got a tool and dual blades. So the, the point of either of them, and I'll walk through each of them quickly, you'll see they're slightly different, is this is a very, very sharp edge and I wanna keep it that way. So how do I do that? When I'm working on things like bone, hide, tendons, any place where there's gonna be dirt, I wanna use the tool. This tool here has a very sharp edge here with almost a chisel type point that is beveled. But the idea is when I'm doing the hocks, in other words, the, the knee joints, I'm cutting a lot of tendon, I'm gonna be on bone. When I'm doing the atlas joint at the head, any place that is gonna be really hard on your primary cutting edge, that's what this tool is for. And when it comes time to do the rest of it, you've preserved the integrity of your blade. So that's with this dual tool system. Then we have the exchange blade system. So you'll see in this one, it has a serrated edge, which a lot of people say, well, why a serrated edge? I've been using serrated edges for my dirty work for a long time. And this, the idea is it's exchangeable. So you just push that, slide it forward. And again, when you're doing bone, hide, leather, hair, tendons, the things that ruin your cutting blade, that's what this serrated blade is for. And now, because you've been doing all your hard and you know real blade damaging work with a serrated edge, when it comes time to get to the meat and do the fine cutting, maybe some caping, you have a very, very sharp edge that's right there to do what you want. Now, there's some other things you can do that will help prolong the life of your, your sharp edge. One, always, when you can, cut with the grain of the hair. So, if you're doing some work and say it's on the dorsal cut in the back, go down, start at the head and go down. Go with the grain. A couple of reasons why you want to go with the hair, the grain of the hair. One, you're going to cut fewer hair follicles, there's always gonna be some hair on your meat, but there's gonna be less if you cut with the hair. Also, to preserve the edge, if you're going against all that, it's just wearing down that edge faster. Another thing that will quickly take the edge off your knife is if you, when you are pulling hide, trying to separate hide from meat, you wanna keep your cutting edge parallel to the hide and perpendicular to the meat. So the benefit of going parallel with the hide is you're not contacting as much leather, as much hair, as much dirt that is often on the hide. So it prolongs the life of this really sharp edge. Another thing that a lot of people do is they take their edge and they start, right, let's say on a hawk here, they start going across the hair. Never take your edge across the hair. It is really, really hard on any edge. No matter how hard your steel is, how fine your edge is, what you wanna do is get underneath the skin and go away from the bone and tissue and that, that skin will just open right up. So those are three basic things that you wanna do, no matter what blade you have, that will preserve the length of this sharp cutting surface. Go with the grain of the hair, go parallel, to the hide when you're removing it from the, the carcass and never go across the hair like this. Just those three basic things will make a big difference. And then with either of these products that we've designed with Gerber, you have a tool or a blade to use when you're talking about bone, hair, tendons, stuff like that, that you can use this serrated edge 
or you can use the tool on this dual tool system. Either of these will help protect your cutting surface. The last thing I want is I'd encourage everybody to use some sort of rubber glove, latex glove, to act as a barrier between you and that carcass. There are diseases, there are all kinds of things that you can get infected from wild animals. It just is the case. We read about it all the time. So they take no space, they weigh nothing, they're very inexpensive, but they're going to save you if ever you have an animal that could possibly infect you through an open cut or a sore. So there you have it folks, some pretty basic tips, no matter what animal, what blade, what edge, whatever you're doing, follow those things and you're gonna have a far extended lifespan to that sharp edge that you need on this cutting surface. And now in the rest of these videos, we're gonna do some quartering, we're gonna do the gutless method, we're gonna do the traditional gutting method, we're gonna do boning, we're gonna do all kinds of things. So stay tuned, hang with us, hopefully you learn something and hopefully you look at these products and you say, hmm, a lot of thought went into that. Maybe I should buy one. Thanks for watching.